Hey guys, my name is Tim and today we're trying to make one of the best Italian pizzas you could ever try to make at home. But to help us a little bit, I have a pizza stone. It's a little bit dirty, but we don't mind that, right? A lot of people are scared to make a pizza dough, but don't worry guys, when you follow all these steps and know the fundamentals, we have no problem making the perfect pizza dough. But now, let's go to the intro. For good pizza dough, you only need four ingredients. Flour, water, salt, and fresh yeast. Many people use too much yeast. You only need a little bit yeast. The reason is simple guys, you have to keep in mind that your dough has to rest at least one day. And in some restaurants in Italy the dough rests up to one whole week. You guys have to make sure to use the right type of flour. This is super important. You may have heard of type 00 flour that you have to use to make a good pizza. But now comes the funny part guys. Type 00 flour doesn't mean it's automatically good to make a good pizza. The most important part in a pizza dough is the W writing in the flour. What? Let me tell you what the W writing is. I could make a 20 minute long video about this, but just put it simple. It's just the protein and gluten content in the flour. W writing can range from 100 to 400. And for Italian pizza, you need a W writing that ranges between 280 and 340. So it's kind of tricky to find the right W writing. Then you have to search it up on Google and normally you have to go to Amazon to buy it or, or it would be amazing if you have a local Italian grocery store. And I chose the flour of the most protein, which would be one of these two Caputo flowers. But if you guys can, try to get the red one. Unfortunately, this isn't a product placement, guys. But did you know you can help me with that? And it's much easier than understanding the W writing. And to do so, you could check the subscribe button down below. It would help me a lot. It's totally free free and you can always unsubscribe later. Personally, I will always start with the water. It's very important. Then add the salt. And at this point, we need to dissolve. Because we don't want to mix the yeast with the salt. So let us separate it. And the way we do it is to add 10% of the flour into the bowl of water. With this method, the dough mixture will dilute. It's quite easy, right? Open the bag with your zero zero flour and add around 10%. Don't worry guys, if you measure it like me with your feelings, it's still okay if you add a little bit more or less. But you should get a consistency like a really thin pancake dough. I will take the yeast and give it into the mixture and then the salt. It. Just give it straight into the mix, you don't have to dissolve in the water. Don't forget to scrape down the sides of the bowl as well. Once we achieve the cream paste, the next step is to continue to add the rest of our flour, but only a little bit at a time. You want flour to absorb all the water. So a little bit at a time and keep mixing. Keep your bowl clean, so you don't have any flour stuck at the edge of the bowl. Always mix along the sides. If you are a little bit lazy, it's okay. You can use a mixer at the beginning as well. And then give it on the bench and finish it. Use only one hand when working in the bowl. We will get the pressure into the dough when we give it on the table. When you see the dough has kind of formed and looks like this, turn it on the bench. Finally, the rework begins. You want to use both hands and always mix it into the flour. So let me tell you when you know the dough is ready. Make a lovely ball and press it down. If it pops back up, the generally tells you the dough is ready. And now what you want to do is to give the dough a side and the rest for 2 hours. We will cover our dough with a damp cloth. It's important to use a damp cloth. When we skip the step, our dough won't stay hydrated and will build a crust or skin on top. We definitely don't want this. And by the way, it's summer guys. Drink enough, stay hydrated as well. And when we come back, we will make our dough portions, but make sure your dough rests up to two hours. Now we have let our dough rest for two hours. And now we are going to proceed to make our dough balls. Let me show you how to make dough balls on the spot. We need around 200 grams of dough for one pizza. You can see how the yeast is working. If you never made dough balls before, don't worry. 
You have enough possibilities to do, so the first would be to round the dough portions on a bench like this. But I hate it, because my hands are so small. Second would be, we can knead the dough like the big ones on the work surface, because it will rise again. And the third is my favorite option, we fold the dough in the air to the other fingers, and when you have a nice smooth surface coming up, I will form it on the bench. There's a lot of things you can do after you form your dough balls. I prefer to use refrigeration. It's much easier to control your dough and you don't have to check on your dough if it's still hydrated. So I personally would recommend to you to use fridge. But when you do it like me, you have to let your dough rise outside till nearly double in size. The reason we do this is because when you place your dough into the fridge, the yeast become inactive but the dough doesn't stop to mature. So guys, keep in mind, we can't give an undeveloped dough into the fridge. Your dough will mature, but don't rise. I keep it in the fridge for 24 hours up to three days. In this time, we can make a super simple tomato sauce. You don't need much ingredients for this, because we want a clear flavor. Give in a pot some canned Italian tomatoes. We use canned tomatoes because they just have much more flavor, especially when you live in a country that doesn't have that much sunny days. Season with salt, pepper and when you use canned tomatoes add a little bit of sugar as well. It cuts the acidity of the tomatoes and creates a more balanced sauce. I sprinkle some flour over my pizza shovel. Then flour the bench so your dough doesn't stick. I'm trying to create a crust. So I start to push down the pizza dough in the middle and form a round shaped thin dough. It doesn't really matter how you get your pizza in shape. If you are insane at pizza flipping, you can make a video and send it me on Instagram or Twitter. The links are down below. Maybe we will react to it. But one thing is important. You can't use a rolling pin because you will destroy all the work the yeast have created. And you know guys, yeast life matters. So you give on your pizza every toppings you like, but don't you dare guys, don't you dare to throw a fucking pineapple on your pizza. And when you do it, Gordo and I will hunt you down. Give your dough on your pizza shovel, it's so much easier than when you have all your toppings on top. Give some tomato sauce on top, then some fresh tomatoes or cherry tomatoes, sprinkle with some parmesan for the umami flavor, classic basil and a little bit of ham and finally our lovely buffalo mozzarella. Before we bake our pizza, it's important to preheat the oven at highest temperature for one full hour. This is important because the pizza stone needs this time to heat up. And finally, you can give your pizza on a smoking hot pizza stone. A pizza this thin in an oven with 250 degrees Celsius or 480 degrees Fahrenheit bakes so fast. It only needs about 8 minutes. I want to wait till I got a nice color. I made a lot more pizzas, so I want to show you the difference of the different baking times. Here's an example with a pizza that only bakes 6 minutes. We have another one with 7 and the last one was was baked for I think 9 minutes and I personally prefer the last one but everyone was cooked through so it don't really depends on the time it only depends on your taste. Let me show you the structure of the dough. It is beautiful isn't it? It's crispy and light. It does come lightly back. It's perfect. The pizza base is thin. It's so delicious and so hot I almost burnt my finger on the tomato sauce. In Italy you fold it classic like this and now buon appetito. Mm. Mm -hmm. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and now you can make an amazing pizza as well. And if you did, it would help me a lot if you could subscribe to my channel, leave a like or a comment down below. And now guys, I hope you had a great day. I see you next time. Bye!